You're listening to School Counseling Simplified, a podcast with easy-to-implement strategies for busy school counselors. Here's your host, Rachel Davis, from Bright Futures Counseling. Have you heard the news? The doors to stress-free school counseling are open this week only. Stress-free school counseling is my course that I've created for school counselors so they can maximize their productivity in order to increase their impact, reach more students than ever before, and finally get the recognition that they deserve. The doors are closing in two days, Thursday at midnight. Now, you may have heard about it before when I've launched in the past and thought, I'm going to check it out later. It's not for me right now. But did I mention this is the final time we are launching Stress-Free School Counseling? Don't wait. Head to StressFreeSchoolCounseling.com to get started today. Okay, let's check out today's episode. Hey there, thanks for listening to another episode of School Counseling Simplified. So if you listened on Friday, we had a special bonus episode where I did an interview with Kaylina, who is a stress-free school counseling student. We got to hear all about her experience as a first-year school counselor implementing the program. Well, today is extra exciting. I thought I was only going to have time to do one interview, But turns out I had time for two. So today's interview is super great. This is with Terry, another stress-free school counseling alumni who also took the program in June. But the cool thing about Terry is she has been a school counselor for 25 years. I love to hear this because this goes to show that stress-free school counseling is not just for new counselors. It's not just for five-year counselors. Terry has been a counselor for 25 years and she is still learning ways to improve and transform her counseling program through stress-free school counseling. She was a delight to talk to. I loved hearing um, you know, what she's doing this school year and all the exciting ways that she's using what she's learned to impact more students and advocate for her role. Um, this is a great episode. I think you're going to love it. So let's check it out. Hey, Terry, how are you today? Good. How are you, Rachel? I'm doing great. Um, I want to thank you so much for coming on the podcast. As the listeners may know, you were a previous Stress Free School Counseling member, or current, I guess, because it's lifetime, um, but you joined us a few months ago, and I'm so happy for you to be here to share your experience. So if people have questions or if they just want to hear what it's like um, from an actual school counselor who's implementing it, I think it'll be really inspiring for the listeners. It's, it's been a really great experience. I really needed this class, this um, stress-free uh, school counseling. It was, it was getting very um, overwhelming. I didn't have any way to track any of my, um, what I was doing. And, and now I have um, some strategies in place that, that are just like, it's making my work life and my, and my home life um, much more pleasant. Oh, good. I'm so glad to hear that. That was my goal when I created it um, because I know the stress. But before we dive into all the details, tell us a little bit about you. So who you are and just your background as a school counselor. Awesome. Well, I um, I got my um, undergraduate degree in uh, psychology at the University of Minnesota Duluth. And then um, and then my my graduate degree um, in school counseling, um, K through eight, actually pre-K through eight in, in Wisconsin at the University of Wisconsin Superior. And I've been, this is my 25th year of school counseling. Um, wow. Yeah, my 17th year here at this school. Um, and um, I like, in my free time, I like to go camping, uh, swim. I'm a competitive swimmer. Oh, awesome. And I like, I like basketball, but I've got some foot problems, so I can't do that stuff right now. But my favorite part about my job is, I love data, number one, but, um, but my favorite part is probably um, going to the classrooms and teaching uh, classroom lessons, as well as the small groups. Those are like my favorite. They're the best. <laughs> That's awesome. So tell us what kind of struggles have you had as a school counselor? Or what part is most challenging to you? Um, I think the most challenging is just trying to fit everything in to a 40 hour week. Like it's not impossible. You always have, you know, more to do. And the hardest part is for me is shutting down and just saying, I, I need to stop. Like, here's my mm-hmm. balance. Um, Cause I just keep going and then I'm working till like six or 7 PM where I was um, previous. So yes. I think that's probably the hardest. 
Yes. And it is so hard because you do care about the kids. So you find yourself taking work home and working in the evenings or on the weekends, but mm-hmm. that will, I mean, as you know, you've been doing it for a number of years, it'll eventually lead to kind of feeling burnout. Yes. And I was starting to feel that last year when, um, when I took the course and it, it kind of helped rejuvenate and help me see a, a better or a different way of doing things that, that makes it less stressful. Yes. And I just love to hear that. So I did another interview with um, a previous course member and she is a first year school counselor. So it's really cool to have the contrast because we have just a variety of people who take the course. But I love for the listeners to hear from, you know, maybe they're a new counselor or maybe there's someone who's been doing it for a while as well and can really resonate with your story. So I love that. Um, But tell me, how did you first find out about the course? Um, I think it was through Teachers Pay Teachers, and I had, um, I think I joined your, um, like, your email so that Mm -hmm. I could, information, and then, um, and then you, I think you probably um, advertised it, and then I, I'm like, I I need to do that. I want (laughs) Amazing. So why did you sign up for the course? So what made you think, like, yes, this is for me? It's, it was talking about organization and also, um, so I was hoping to learn, you know, better organizational tips and also being able to track what a school counselor does, because it's, it's not the same as a reading teacher or a math teacher where they have like math data or reading data. Um, and I didn't know that any good ways to track counseling data. And now I have several different ways that, um, and I'm super excited about, um, about this year and, and how it's all gonna, um, go. Oh, amazing. Um, and what about hesitations? Was anything like stopping you from wanting to sign up or were you hesitant at all? So I, I took the, the free, the free class and it, within that, I found out about the, the paid stress-free counseling class. And I just, any reservations were possibly just the cost, but then when I, after the, taking the class, it was well worth the, the price. I, I would do it again in a heartbeat. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. And yes, I do realize that it is an investment, you know, for school counselors. And we do, as the listeners may know, if they haven't checked out our uh, landing page yet, to get all the details, stressfreeschoolcounseling.com, but we do offer like a two payment um method to make things a little easier. Cause I know, you know, how that goes for sure. Um, but yes, I'm so glad to hear that you think it was well worth your time and investment. Yes, for sure. So tell us, um, you said you're excited about getting to use the data. Um, tell us how has it helped you? How has stress-free school counseling helped you? Um, well, it's helped me set boundaries, um, as far as, you know, how late I'm going to stay at work, um, how much I'm going to bring home. Um, I've determined, you know, I can only do X amount and then the rest just has to wait because it will be there tomorrow. Mm-hmm. I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and um, it's also helped um, with um, with just being able to track some data. Um, I've I'm working on my um, needs assessment that I'm going to be sending out um, probably this week to our teachers. I wanted to wait a little bit to Mm -hmm. um, so as to meet their kids and see what the needs of their classrooms are right now. So either this week or maybe next week, um, I'll I'll send that out. And um, I'm going to be starting a couple small groups, one um, for anxiety and one for friendship and problem solving. And so um, I will be doing a like an, a self-assessment for students as well as the teachers and the parents to fill up one out before and after. Mm-hmm. Really looking forward to seeing um, progress of the students um, and hopefully not, but uh, also if there's any areas of improvement, um, which I'm sure, you know, everyone has those. So um looking forward to just seeing, seeing it. Yeah. You know, before it was kind of, I don't know, abstract. 
Yes. You're like, I think this is working, but it seems like it's working, but you know, now you can measure and you have this tangible result. So I love to hear that you're using it this school year already. How exciting. Yes. Yes. I wish I could have used it last year. I mean, yeah. I probably could have at the point that I took it, but I, I, I don't, I think I just didn't have enough time to really absorb it yet. So yeah, the summer was good. Okay. So it sounds like you've been loving the data collection tools. Um, it, was that your favorite module or which one of the modules was your favorite? I think that was my favorite. I, I did like the, um, how to handle pushback. Mm-hmm. Um, that was really good. Um, but I'm still, um, there is some pushback and I, I haven't quite figured out how to, to manage that, um, because they're the boss. So, uh, <laughs> so you got to kind of do what they want. Um, so we're just working with it. Yeah. And I'm so glad to have given you some strategies for that also. Um, so for listeners who are wondering what the modules cover, we start off with scheduling and then organization, then data collection, which is my personal favorite as well. Um, and then we talk about advocating for your role using those first three modules and then how to handle any pushback or resistance that you get from your administrative team or teachers, parents, yourself, anybody, because that does happen. <laughs> for sure. So would you say, I know it's still the beginning of the school year, um, but would you say that stress-free school counseling has transformed your counseling program? Yes, I think, I think it has, and it will continue to, um, to transform it. I am super excited about just like at the end of the year or middle of the year and then end of the year, looking at the results and even at the end of all the small groups and, and things like that, just looking how, how students progress and, um, and like tracking, like how many students I see Mm -hmm. or any classrooms I go to, how many small groups, um, just it's, it's going to be awesome. Yes, I know. And I love the end of the year report. I talk about that a lot on the podcast, Um, but I do, I've been kind of encouraging people to use a data wall this year. So you don't have to wait till the end of the year to share all the fun stuff. You know, you can take out after you end a small group, you can share some of that data, just like a little bulletin board or something to keep people up to date and excited throughout the school year. I love that. Yeah. Um, So I love you were saying, you know, it's not just about measuring student growth, but also showing the number of students that you've impacted. So kind of like our tagline for stress-free school counseling is to increase your impact and get the recognition you you deserve. So I want to talk about those two points Um, in regards of increasing your impact. How did the course help you reach more students? Do you feel like it has allowed you to see more students than previously? Um, Yes. Um, I'm actually, yes, I'm doing more counseling, actual school counseling um, than before. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing. Yes, yes. That's so one of my goals, because that's why everyone gets into the profession, right? Is because you want to see the kids and help the kids, but then you end up spending a lot of time on these other tasks um, that we're not trained to do and that slow us down. Right, right. And currently I am doing a, um, the time tracker where you all of your time to determine how you're spending it. So um, it's kind of neat to see. Um, I am, we are case uh, 504 case managers here. And I know that's not one of our um, official counselor duties um, in ASCA anyway. And so um, that is taking up a chunk of my time and it would be nice to be able to show my administrators, hey, here's where my time is going. Um, and I also have lunch and recess duties. Mm-hmm. Right? I think those are going to go away. But right now, those are also not counselor duties. And so it'll be nice to be able to show show my administrators, hey, here's where my time is going. I could also, you know, be doing more counseling. Exactly. Yeah. It and it's, it's not like you can necessarily, you know, talk them into getting you out of your bus duty, that would be awesome. But it's just let it bring in awareness to it because they may not know like, oh, but then if they do start to see an increase in, you know, student mental health needs, which I'm sure there are, especially this (laughs) year, then they can think like, oh, maybe we should have someone else do that task so our counselor can spend time 
doing what they went to school for, right? Like what they're trying right. to do. Yes, yes. And so, yeah. And since this year, um, our state of Oregon has um, more funding um, because of COVID. Mm-hmm. So I think the Student Success Act, um, maybe that would be a possibility to get, you know, more staffing. That would be amazing. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So those numbers can really, you know, bring you confidence when you have those discussions and those meetings because the data can back you up, which is so helpful. Yes. I'm, I'm really looking forward to having some data to, to back me up in, in my um, meetings. Yes. And the second part um, to our, like our tagline is to help you get the recognition you deserve. Um, So do you feel like you've been able to, we kind of just talked about how you can use this to advocate for your role, but do you feel like uh, teachers or admin are kind of learning more about who you are and your role at the school? I I think they are and they will be. Um, I'm sending out um, an email um, because we had this year, I've been the only counselor at my school for years and years and years and years. And it's a school, it has been a school of about 700 students. Um, but this year, I have one and a half other counselors to help me out. So we are sending out an email to all the, the staff telling about ourselves, um, our the counsel, as a counselor, like what does the counselor do? Mm-hmm. A blurb about us individually. Um, So that's going to probably go out either today or tomorrow. Um, And I think that's really going to be eye opening um, for, for some staff that have been here a long time and for new staff just to get to know us and what the counseling department, I can finally say, (laughs) is, um, you know, here for and what we can do to support kids. Yes, that's amazing that you have a department now. That's great. I know. Super exciting. (laughs) So exciting. And I find the teachers especially um, get excited when they find out like what all we can offer, like because, you know, teachers too have a heart for helping the kids and they don't want to only be doing instruction. They're often like super invested in the social emotional piece, but they don't have the time, you know, to do it while they're meeting all the standards. So I found teachers come to me so relieved, like, oh, you can come in and do lessons on this. Like that would be awesome. Or, you know, you can pull this one kid and give them a little extra support or even, you know, training the teachers with strategies that they can implement in the classroom, letting them know that's a service you can provide too. Yes. Yes. It's, it's, yes. The, I, the whole stress-free school counseling course is, there's so many good things about it and um, it's been so helpful. I, I just, I can't thank you enough. (laughs) Well, thank you. I'm so glad to hear that. Um, And so glad that you're sharing your story with other counselors. So I guess the final question I have for you, and I think I know the answer, but would you recommend (laughs) stress-free school counseling to another school counselor? Yes. Yes, definitely. In fact, I I even told, so one of the counselors, um, I told her last year about it. And I think she just, you know, was, it was, she was still interning. And it was just like a little bit too much for her to do that and go to school and right. Um, but maybe I'll maybe I'll share again because I think she would like it a lot. Amazing. And if you do, if you're listening and you're an intern, or you could tell your intern, I have a free boot camp. It's kind of like a, similar to stress free school counseling, but specifically for people still in grad school. Um, it's kind of just like a free little video series I've put together. So. Oh, cool. We'll link to that in the show notes for anyone listening, but maybe she would like that if she's not quite ready for um, stress-free school counseling. But that being said, I do think, you know, first-year counselor, 10-year counselor, 30-year counselor, um, I do think, truly believe, and I designed it that way, that the systems in place could help a variety of school counselors, regardless of how long you've been doing it. Yeah, I was kind of embarrassed at first about, like, say how many years I've been doing this that I haven't been tracking data, but when we started, there wasn't like, we didn't have that. Right. Yeah. So there was a lot of things cause it was a long time ago um, <laughs> um, that we just didn't have. And now, and now that they have it and you've come up with a really, really good strategies for um, collecting data and um, sharing the data um, it's, it's well worth, a person's time and energy and money to take this class to be able to 
be less stressful. Yes. And have a happy, <laughs> happy career that you enjoy. Absolutely. Oh, I love it, Terry. Well, thank you so much for your time and for sharing your experience with us. Um, I'm excited for you. It sounds like you're going to have a great school year. Yeah, I am too. I, I'm really excited about this school year. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Thanks for listening to School Counseling Simplified. You can find the links from today's episode in the show notes. If you'd like to connect with Rachel, she's on Instagram and Teachers Pay Teachers at Bright Futures Counseling. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss any episodes of School Counseling Simplified. Talk to you next week.